Okay, so uh, CRISPR ethics and how far we as humans should be able to take it. So what is it and why does it affect me? Uh, so the phrase CRISPR is kind of thrown around a lot in the scientific community, especially those who are interested in the uh, genetic field. Uh, and basically what it is, or all it is really, um, is it's just the immune system of a lot of uh, the simpler organisms like uh, bacteria and things like that. Um, it's not until scientists uh, combine it with a couple of things until it can be used for medical uses. Um, and what it does is that uh, it basically targets uh, DNA, which is the, the, the rungs on the ladder of the picture that I've got going on here. Um, it targets those rungs on the ladder of DNA and because of that, and because almost all living things use DNA, um, the potential for its uses is essentially limited. Uh, and it affects, you know, the United States and uh, humans in general because um, this research is rapidly expanding. Uh, especially if you look at art scholarly articles written in the past year alone, uh, it has just ballooned in size. Um, many scientists regard this as uh, the key to unlocking and, and completely getting rid of some diseases. Uh, but even though some people view it as this, uh, this miracle working thing, there are uh, potential consequences that need to be looked at. Uh, first and foremost, that scientists don't know the long-term effects uh, when editing uh, sex cells, or uh, germline editing it's called, uh, and that's a problem because what uh, what scientists don't want to do is they don't want to uh, set something in motion or, or edit a part of, of humans uh, and have that change be permanently passed down from generation to generation. Uh, and although that might sound uh, not too bad on the surface level, um, the fear is that uh, they will end up creating uh, maybe uh, they will create uh, an, a, a resistance to uh, antibiotics or they will create um, another virus or something like that. Uh, another potential consequence is that um, it's a lot of times scientists are practicing on mosquitoes and they're working on mosquitoes uh, and due to them being able to, due to mosquitoes being able to repopulate very quickly, um, but once those things are changed and then released into the environment, scientists have no control when they're out in the wild. Uh, and so if something bad were to happen to those mosquitoes or to any of these animals that we are uh, releasing back into the wild, um, everything is linked within science. And so if if uh, a food source for one animal is, is, is edited using this, this CRISPR science, uh, then it's not just affecting uh, the, the, the animal that scientists are changing, it is affecting everything through a domino effect. Uh, and that could have really serious consequences. I mean, it could potentially wipe out uh, an ecosystem. Uh, on a more philosophical level, uh, do we as humans have the, the, the moral uh, right to, to, to mess with our, our coding. Um, you know, do we have the right to, to, to play God, as some would say? Uh, and the final thing just kind of to think about in terms of consequences is, uh, at what point are we, are we editing diseases uh, and attempting to remove uh, a tumor in a child? And then at what point are we saying... Um, you know, I want my my child to be uh, smarter. I want my child to be um, a, a taller, faster, stronger, uh, and that that matters because be, that matters because CRISPR is going to be something most likely that is going to be extremely expensive to use, uh, and so if we are um, using this and, and advancing this 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 CRISPR editing science. Um, it is most likely only going to be available for those who are extremely wealthy. And so what's going to happen is that uh, if you are, and if the scientists are able to eventually edit you know, 
uh, specific characteristics, you're going to have an extreme uh, disparity and inequity between um, and furthering divide between the rich and uh, the poor, those who do not have the money to enhance their children. Um, and that would be a huge problem because obviously uh, inequality is already an extremely um, an extremely big problem, especially within the United States. Uh, so to to use or not to use um, so you know the first part of this is that you know the the medical applications are are limitless um, you know uh, anything from cancer to uh, cystic fibrosis to um, really just just any disease that you could think of and especially something that scientists are targeting or something or are these diseases called uh, monogenic diseases, which is basically they're 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 more simpler diseases to spot and to treat within our coding, uh, and those in really within the next few years of research could be wiped out. Um, and things like 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 cancer, where there are all thousands of factors involved, you know, would take time uh, to hopefully one day wipe out, but. There are some diseases, uh, cystic fibrosis, sickle cell anemia being one of them, or excuse me, sickle cell disease, um, that the scientists are really, really close a couple of years out from uh, having the ability to almost completely wipe out. Uh, and then on the not to use side, um, the misuse of this could be extreme. Um, one of the sources uh, of a professor from Yale said that or he, he, he talked about how easy it could be, um, or excuse me, a professor from Stanford talked about how easy it could be to change uh, the, the, chick, the, the chicken pox, um, something as simple as the chicken pox, to modify it using this, this science, to modify that into the smallpox. Uh, and the smallpox was extremely deadly, um, extremely, extremely contagious, uh, that was wiped out, basically. Um, but someone, if they, if they had malicious intent or if they simply didn't know what they were doing or weren't taking the proper precautions, could really edit that and change that and release that, which would have disastrous consequences for uh, potentially millions of people around the world. Uh, however, uh, as we'll see in my next slide, mis misuse is, is already rampant. It, it, it is already... Uh, happening, okay, uh, and that's because of a real lack of of, of enforced regulations. Um, basically, every country has different regulations for for what they are allowed and not allowed to do. Um, and since there's this inconsistency between country to country, there's no real way to enforce uh, the regulations that do exist. Um, what is what is legal in the United States? Uh, might be legal in uh, England. Um, what is legal in China specifically uh, could be completely illegal anywhere else. Um, and since there are also just a, 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 an in general lack of regulations, uh, you also have things that are illegal everywhere but that are still being done because there's, real, there's, there's a lack of enforcement. Uh, and that lack of enforcement really boils down to uh, inconsistency. Uh, there are several papers written um, about scientists in China from 2015 and 2018. Uh, and the 2018 one is uh, a, a Chinese scientist claimed to have uh, edited and worked on these uh, uh, twins, twin girls, uh, in vitro. And he claimed to have uh, removed a gene uh, or altered a gene in a way that would help prevent the uh, transmission of HIV, uh, which sounds really great on paper, and that, that claim is, 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 is incredible. Uh, but when you really dive into his research, and what other scientists have come out and said is that there was no real reason for this experiment to be happening. There was no risk for these, uh, for these um, healthy Chinese twin girls to be edited. And so really this was a case of a scientist who was um, 
experimenting to experiment. Uh, and it is, it is not um, the role of, the, of, of a doctor or of a scientist to take it upon himself or herself uh, to experiment on um, twin girls. Uh, so a solution. Um, research is going to happen regardless of regulations. Uh, and that is never a good idea to allow something to happen just because it's going to happen anyway. anyways. But um, the problem is that uh, the regulations that are currently in place are only stopping the research that that, that science and that the community and society as a whole wants to happen. Uh, it is, it is the, the legal research that could be the key to getting rid of disease. It is not the, the, the research that is about editing uh, in vitro kids to have a different color of eyes that is uh, mostly illegal, if not all illegal, um, in all countries. But it, it is not that research that is advancing uh, the proper use of what CRISPR should be for. Uh, and so the, the, the problem is that with the regulations we have in place, um, only the, the, uh, the so-called uh, CRISPR babies and the, um, the, the, the improper ways is being used. Uh, and so finally I have my more specific plan of how that could be regulated. Uh, and so uh, this was proposed by one paper uh, that I will cite um, and I've kind of trimmed it down a little bit uh, but uh, an international group uh, needs to set a universal standard that way every country has the same set of rules and same regulations to work with uh, there are no inconsistencies there are no um, differences in uh, what they are allowed to do, what they are allowed to work with, uh, any punishments would be easier to hand out, uh, and it stands out as a deterrent um, in, in in any research that would be faulty. Uh, and this international group would also set um, the proper precautions and standards to which this research should take place. Um, when you are having uh, research labs without um, that are that are illegal uh, without legality, uh, the the precautions taken are typically uh, lower because they are having to hide the research done, uh, and that poses another problem. Uh, and so this way, research is happening the right way when you are using uh, a universal international group. Uh, and the last point I'd like to make um, is that uh, when you have one country. Uh, making the rules and setting the rules for any regulations like like that uh, they are influenced by uh, political um, and, 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 and self-bias uh, but when you would have one international group it is not looking out for the interests of individual uh, countries and, and, and people who are uh, trying to hold political power it is it is looking out for uh, world safety uh, it would operate in relatively the same way as uh, the United Nations group. Uh, that is all I have for y'all. Thank you very much for listening.